Okay, so we're going to talk about finding the least common denominator for rational expressions. And in a previous video, I reviewed how to do this just for like regular old fractions. And I think that it's important that you are familiar with how this works with regular fractions because then this is kind of just an extension of the technique. So if you're not familiar with this, I strongly encourage you just to check out my quick video reviewing that skill. Okay, so kind of building on from the video that we had from earlier. So what is the LCD between one over two X and one over three Y squared? Okay, so to find an LCD when you have rational expressions in the denominator like we have here, you do the same thing that you would do um, as if you had like just fractions with just numbers. So the number part of the LCD is still going to be, so we'll just say the number part of the LCD is still just going to be two times three. But then um, also if you look at these denominators, so this has an X and this has a Y squared. So these two denominators still do not have any common factors. So the LCD then is literally just going to be found by multiplying these two denominators together to get six X Y squared. So the first thing that we want to get comfortable with now is this like nuance of having these variables. So what I want to do is I just want to take a look at like, what do we do with these extra variables in the denominator? And let's just start with example a here. So notice that for, I, I've got three examples here. All of them have the same number parts. They all have a two and a three. So we can really just isolate what's going on with the variables. Okay. So, <clears throat> If we think about it for a second, so let's just highlight and let's just focus on having the X squared and the X Y squared. Okay. So what's the LCD between just the X squared and the X Y squared part? This is actually pretty simple to figure out, but let's try to understand the logic behind why this works. Cause it, it won't take us too long to figure that out. Okay. So X squared is just X times X. Okay. And X, Y squared. So if I wanted to write both of these, these out in kind of their fully multiplied factored form, this is what it would look like. And so similar to how we find LCDs with like normal fractions, I could ask myself that question of when I look at the multiplication, what factors do they have in common? And both of these have a singular X in common this one has an extra X and then this one has two Y's. So this is the only factor of X that they have in common. So if I just think about, so again, we're just trying to understand and appreciate the logic here. So the LCD is always what they don't have in common or sorry, <laughs> what they have in common. So that would be this X here. And then all the stuff that they don't have in common. So I'm just kind of writing this off on the side. If I multiply these things together, this gives me X squared, Y squared. And so I wanted to appreciate the logic of this because you can actually see a really easy shortcut. So if I go back to looking at these two denominators here, so I have X squared and X Y squared. So as far as like the exponents go, which exponents did I choose? Well, I made sure that I had each letter represented in the LCD and then I chose the highest exponent. So right, I've got X squared here. And that's actually the shortcut. So, so figuring out what to do with like the variables with LCDs when they look like this, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. And, and this is why that works in case you were wondering. Okay. So let me clear some space. And now we can kind of go through finding the LCD. So in this case, my first LCD, oh, I'm going to change the pen color. So this is going to be six X squared y squared. So you have to make sure you represent each variable and then just take the highest exponent. So why don't you try the next two? Let's check your intuition. Hit play when you think you've got them. Okay. So like I said, the number part's the same for all of these. So this is going to be X to the seventh Y to the fifth again, cause I have to represent each variable and then I just take the highest of the exponents. And then for this last one, so this is going to be six X to the fifth, Y to the seventh, Z to the eighth. Again, because those are the highest exponents in the, this, this case. 
Okay, cool. So pretty straightforward um, when you have just extra letters, variables in the denominator like this. Why don't we just take a look at the whole shebang now uh, when you have to figure out the number part and the variable part. So taking everything that we've learned so far, why don't you pause here? Let's check your intuition. Hit play when you think you've figured it out. Okay, so we kind of have to be careful with how we organize information at this point. So I always like to do the number part separate from the letter part or the variable part. So let's just work on figuring out, so with 14 and 21, what's the LCD between these two? Well, seven divides both of these numbers. So seven is what they have in common. Maybe I'll just write the number part of the LCD. So, oops, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be seven times three. Okay, so my LCD is what they have in common, which is seven, and then what they don't have in common. So this really comes out to seven times six, so my LCD in this case is 42. So this is the number part of the LCD. So then my total LCD is gonna be 42 x cubed y to the seventh. Again, I'm just picking the highest exponent. Okay, so I've got one more here for you. I wanna encourage you to try this one again. You know, the more you engage with the video, the more you're gonna get out of it, and then the, the easier, you know, applying this is gonna become. Pause here, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so in this case, when I have 24 and 12, well, the largest number that divides into both of these is 12. So 24 is really 12 times two, and 12 is just 12 times one. So you're always looking for what's the largest number that divides both of them, and in this case, it is, it is 12. So it's the number itself, which is fine. So my LCD then is actually gonna be 24, right? Because that's what they have in common times Two, so 24 would be the LCD part, or the number part, x cubed, y to the fifth. Okay, so now let's switch gears a little. So what's the LCD now between one over x plus two and one over x? So I want you to think about this for a second, and I actually want you to just write on a piece of paper what you think it is. So commit to a guess here, and then hit play when you think you have something. Okay, so this one always kind of messes with people's minds, and this is why I want you to like check your intuition for a second. Um, so the LCD here actually is x times x plus two. Okay, so why? So the LCD is always found by multiplying factors together. And I know sometimes when your brain looks at this, you see x and x, and you're like, oh, if I just add two to it, then I get to the LCD. So a lot of times I hear that the LCD is X plus two, but it's not because I'm not allowed to add things to get my LCD. Every single time we find an LCD, it's always find, found by multiplying things together. So in this case, X and X plus two, they're two totally different factors. And so we have to multiply them together to get the LCD. Okay, so that being said, um, let's let's extend this idea just a little bit more. Okay, so how do you think you're gonna find the LCD between one over x squared minus four and one over x squared plus five x plus six? Well, if you've been playing along at home with how we work with rational expressions, you know that once you start seeing things that look like this, you're probably gonna to have to factor them. So what I wanna encourage you to do is, I'm actually not even gonna tell you what you, you have to do. I, again, I, I think it's better if we kind of see how your intuition is going. I want you, to factor both of these. And then I want you to apply that logic we've been using with the LCD. I want you to apply it to this and let's see if you can come up with the LCD. The worst that happens is that you don't get it. Hit play when you're ready. All right, so I'm gonna factor these. So x minus two, x plus two, and then x squared plus five x plus six. This is gonna be x plus two, x plus three. Okay, so let's think about what we know about the LCD. It's always what they have in common. So in this case, that would be X plus two. And then the things that they don't have in common. And so check it out. This is why I was advocating for this like specific way of thinking about finding LCDs. Because now this logic kind of just applies all the way through all these different applications, right? So you find what they have in common and then you multiply what they don't, so cool. Okay, 
So now let's just do a couple more of these just to make sure that we're comfortable in working with, you know, these different polynomial bases. Why don't you pause and give this one a try? Hit play when you think you've got it. Okay, so 5x minus 10, this will factor as 5 times x minus 2, and 7x minus 14 factors as 7 times x minus 2. So this one's kind of interesting because it's not like, it's like a different type of polynomial, um, so it might feel like a little awkward in how you find the LCD. But the LCD at the end of the day, so what do they have in common is x minus 2, and what they don't have in common is 5 and 7. So my LCD in this case will be 35 times x minus 2, and you really don't need to distribute that. Um, you can just kind of leave that as is. That'll be fine. Okay, so let's do another one again. The more you can kind of lean into this and try this, the better off you're going to be with this topic. So consider pausing here and giving it a try. Okay, so I, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and write both of these in their factored form. So we'll just, we'll just go voila like that. Um, so you don't have to watch me write everything out. So make sure that you've got all of this factored um, correctly. So I have x minus 7x minus 5 for this one, and then this will be x plus 5x minus 4. Okay, so this one is just kind of here to keep you on your toes. So in this case, what would my LCD be? Well, it would be this enormous LCD because actually there's nothing in common, right? So when you don't have things in common, then you do actually multiply the LCDs together. So we're always trying to look for like when there's overlap in terms of factors and to like use that in the LCD, but in this case that didn't happen. So you're just gonna write everything out. So this would be this would be a really gnarly problem to actually do something with, but it's it's a nice one just to discuss as we're understanding LCDs. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to pivot again, and I want to think about this situation. So I have 1 over x minus 3 and 1 over 3 minus x. So in other videos, I've talked about this concept of, well, I always call it the negative 1 thing. It's really called the multiplicative property of negative 1. And so the idea is that if I look at like 3 minus x, so the idea is that if I were to factor out negative 1, so what would effectively happen is then these signs would flip and then I could reverse the order. And so I could rewrite this as x minus 3. So this is important to recognize because if you look at x minus 3 and 3 minus x, at first glance it might look like these are two different denominators. But the reality is that I can just factor out negative 1. And this right here just equals negative 1 over x minus 3. So I can just put a negative up here and then rewrite the denominator. So the LCD in this case, they actually have the same denominator and the LCD would just be x minus three. So this is one of those times where you just gotta kinda be on, be on alert, keeps you on your toes. Okay, so let's apply that idea then, very similar idea to this B here. So I wanna encourage you to figure out what is the LCD and why. Pause here, use this idea, hit play when you're ready. Math is not a spectator sport. Okay, so x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then 2 minus x can be rewritten as negative 1 times x minus 2. So the LCD here actually then is x plus 2, x minus 2. Now a really common question I get is, but wait, what about this negative 1? And so this is kind of like a funny thing. So the negative one doesn't matter in terms of the LCD. We don't have to bring it in. And the reason why is it has to do with just like the general property of negatives with fractions. So um, let's just state this little fact up here. Okay, so if I have some fraction A over B, okay, so if I have A over negative B, this is equivalent to negative A over B which is equivalent to, so if I put that negative right directly in the center of the fraction, all of these things are equivalent to one another. And so that's why if I have this negative here, so what, what that means, maybe just to now put this in the context of this particular example, so if I have this one over two minus x, well, I know that I can rewrite this as this, right? These two things are equivalent. And if these two things are equivalent and then I have this negative here, well, now according to 
this fact up here, I am allowed now to take this negative and just transfer it to the top. So I can just call this this. All of those things are equivalent to one another. So that's why we don't care about having the negative in the LCD because if we have that negative, we can just transfer it on top and not worry about it. Okay, so for the last one, I have kind of a challenge problem here. Um, so now I have three denominators. And once again, I, I kind of want to just like challenge you to keep going with the idea that we've got here. So you know that you're going to have to factor all of these to start. So factor these and take a look at what you've got and then just make your best guess as to what the LCD is. Worst that happens is you get it wrong. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so to save time, I'm just going to um, show you what the factorizations of these three things are. Okay, so you can um, pause the video here and you can just double check that your factorizations match what I've got. Okay, so the LCD in this case is now a little bit of a brain teaser because you'll notice that at most there are only three factors that are really being used here. So this one uses x plus 5, x plus 4. This one uses x plus 5 and x minus 5. So between these two, th this shares x plus 5, right? And then from this factorization to this factorization, so now I've got x plus 5, x minus 5, and then x minus 5, x plus 4. So these share the x minus 5, right? So when we come up with the LCD then, it's that minimum number of factors we need to make any one of these combinations. So the LCD then is going to be x plus 5 x plus 4 and x minus 5 in whatever order you had that in as long as you had those three. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you're looking for more instruction, you want to see more examples of a particular type, I do have more in my video library, so I strongly recommend that you check those out. You know, this is kind of just something to kind of get you started. And if you have more questions, uh, I try to fill in those gaps so that you can kind of choose your own adventure with whatever your needs are to understand this material. And if you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like or hitting the subscribe button. And otherwise, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.